Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, a.k.a. PD Beats. Hello and welcome to the Pop Turnative Podcast. It's the podcast where we have digital discussions the worlds of pop culture, social media, sports, everything really as always. I'm your host, Peter Meliotis, and on Twitter you know me as PD Beats. My guest is an actor and you will recognize him from a show part of the Marvel Universe on Netflix, Luke Cage. We are with Justin Swain who plays Detective Mark Bailey. Justin, welcome to Pop Turnative. Hi, thanks for having me. Excited to be here. No problem. Icebreaker question. How does it feel to be part of the Marvel Universe? Um, fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty great. Um, it, it's, it's awesome. It, they're, they're an amazing group of people. The people who work on Marvel's Luke Cage are probably some of the best people I've ever worked with. Very family-like atmosphere. It's, it's, a, it's a privilege, man. It's awesome. Take us through kind of when you found out that you were going to be part of Luke Cage. What was going through your mind? What was the process like? <laughs> um, yeah, I've told this story a couple times. It's it's pretty funny. I actually had two auditions that day. Uh, one was in the morning for a show called Limitless. Mm-hmm. And then I had this other one for this show that they wouldn't tell me. Everything is top secret. So it's all shot under a code name and you have to sign an NDA. So I think it's gotten out online that the code name for Luke Cage at the time was Tierra. And so all I knew is that I got this script for something called Tierra by Disney. So I, I thought it was a princess show. I, di- I didn't know what I didn't know what it was. <laughs> and then um, and then I went into the audition because earlier that day I really bombed the other audition. I was terrible and I was just so bummed and angry. And, and I was like, all right, well, I'm going to go in. And I'm going to do this audition for Tierra. And uh when I went in to do it, um, I was kind of feeling a little devil may care. I really love the cast and director, uh, Julie. She's incredible. And um, I was really comfortable. And I did the audition. And I was kind of loosey-goosey and having fun with it. And she was like, okay, that's that's really great. And she's like, have you ever done a Nev- uh, Marvel show or a Netflix show? And I said, no. And she said, okay, well, maybe you might. And I was like, I hope so. And then I left, um, thinking that went pretty well. And then I was actually heading up north with my wife. I think it was Labor Day weekend and we were in a convertible and mm-hmm. we were going on the highway and my agent called and all I heard him kind of say was, you got it. And I was like, what are you talking about? And he got it confused. He was like the limitless audition. And I was like, I was like, no, you got to be kidding me. I was terrible. And he was like, he's like, no. And I was like, my, my wife, my amazing wife, the name of Amanda, I said, pull over. Um, we have to, I kind of hear what my agent is saying because the top was down. And he said, no, you got the other one, the, the, the thing, but I don't know what it is. And we looked it up and found out it was it was a code name for Luke Cage. And I was like, that's amazing. And uh, and then I got <laughs> a, um, a, a message in my inbox welcoming me to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It says you're now a part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Unbelievable. And, yeah. And then that was super exciting and everything kind of went from there. It's really, really happy. And there's so many layers of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. You know, there's there's the bit, there's the movies and the theaters, there's the shows, and you know, there's so many people that are a part of being, uh, so many people that are able to be a part of the Marvel Universe. You know, we've had you know Michael Nathanson who's in the Punisher on the show. Yeah, he's great. He's talk, awesome. talk a little bit about. There seems to kind of be not just like the Luke Cage people are tight with each other, but there seems to be like cool relationships between people of different Marvel parts of the different Marvel universe. Yeah, I mean, I, I never ran into uh, Michael Nathanson. I don't, I've never met him face to face, but there's there are these gigantic um, sound studios in New York where they're where they're filming this, and they'll film you know a couple shows at the same time, and like some of the crews crossed over and everything. So there is this sense of like crossover, and you could be walking down the hallway and run into like Jessica Jones while you're shooting Luke Cage. And so it's, it is kind of cool. And you run into people on the street in New York. Um, uh, I ran into some actors from Jessica Jones and, you know, talked about my experience. And, yeah, so there's kind of a bit of a connection there. It's, oh, absolutely. I, I think, personally, I think it's really cool. So, Justin, I don't think it's ever left, but I've, I've talked to many other people about this um, on the show or just, you know, um, at work. I think that, and I don't know what 
what's the reason for this, but I think there's been kind of like you look at all the comic cons and the conventions around. There's I feel like there's been a boom in the geek nerd culture the last couple of years. I don't think it ever. Thank went God, in. right? I mean, look at all that fan base. They're so awesome. But it's do you not a, do you not agree though that the last three four years at least there's kind of been this like oh it was always there it was always there and then boom so much more content so many more conventions like what do you think about that as part of the Marvel universe? I, mean, I think it's a blessing, man. It, it's it's pretty crazy. I think what happened was, you know, this comic book culture started to kind of come out of the shadows, and then people realized that these fans are all over the country and they're and they're everywhere. And so you can put up a comic con in you know Indiana or New Hampshire or, or Canada, and people are going to come because there's actually that many fans, and and they're excited to be a part of it. So it's it's amazing. I I, I appreciate it in a big way. Netflix is kind of one of those um, big components now of kind of per, like introducing new content, but there's many different streams of how we can kind of find content. What do you like specifically about kind of the new ways of media and the new ways of streaming? And it, it helps, you know, actors like yourself, storytellers like yourself, because there's more opportunity for work, but there's also kind of... Um, as people have mentioned in the past like a little bit of a, a, a double-edged sword because there's so much opportunities out there but there's maybe there's more competition as well you know for roles because there's so many more people out there like what do you kind of think of that i i think that it's incredible and it's the golden age of television mm. I, I mean they're they're giving people like myself and other people opportunity to be part of really really good writing and and really really amazing shows and I, I just I, I can't say anything bad about it really. I, mm -hmm. what, what's gone on is now there's more platforms for more amazing artists to get a chance to tell stories. And I think there are a lot of them out there and this gives an opportunity for platforms for so many more people that um, that, 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 that like have something to say. And it's, mm -hmm. it's really fantastic. It, it's, a, it's a blessing. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. So season two of Luke Cage recently was uh, put on Netflix. Um, talk a little bit. I want to know if you think – I want to talk Luke Cage specifically. Talk a little yeah. bit about kind of the differences in general between you know, season one and season two. And then talk a little bit about your character. What is your character kind of going through in season two? What could people expect from it? Um, well, season one was amazing. It it it, uh, it came out and it, you know I think it shut down Netflix for like three hours or something. It was really cool, and uh, and everyone's really excited about it. And you know you had Luke kind of coming out of the shadows in in season one, and now in season two, what you're gonna see is he's out from behind the curtain, and people know who he is. He's he's pretty famous in Harlem. Um, Misty Knight obviously had a had the injury in the Defenders and coming in and dealing with that, and so the big difference between Luke Cage season one and season two is in season two everyone's gotten a little bit more power and a little bit more status or dealing with some issue they weren't dealing with in season one, and it's kind of how do you balance that power or that fame or that status um, with your moral center and still be who you are. Uh, and that's a major theme in this in the second season and Bailey himself. So Mark Bailey has been promoted to detective. He's been kind of ruling the roost a little bit in the NYPD while Misty was away um, with her injury. He has a new partner played by the amazing Antonique Smith. And, and now Simone Missick is back, who's incredible, playing um, Misty Knight. And what happens is Bailey's kind of caught in the middle of this old uh, friendship and this, this new partner she need, he, he needs to be loyal to. And so how you kind of balance that out with trying to maintain those relationships and, and be a good person is kind of his journey in the, in the second season. Whether you're an actor, a writer, a musician, um, an artist, you are what I like to call a storyteller. That's how I kind of define that craft of work. What is your, I'm sure there's a big list, but what is your favorite thing? Or can you narrow it down to a couple of things? What do you like the most about being a storyteller, Justin? Um, I keep telling people this, and it keeps coming up in, in my interviews I've been doing around Luke Cage this year. I get to live in an imaginary universe with such depth and, and, and creativity and be a part of that universe like every single day it's like playing cops and robbers at the highest level with with all the bells and whistles and so being able to live in that 
imaginary world and and enjoy my time there is is quite incredible and that's that's what i like about it right now because the people i work with are amazing talents theo rossi mike coulter alfie woodard uh, they're all incredible talented people and it's just amazing to be there wa- watching and learning from them How, has there have there been any um you know where you're you know going to events or you know walking down the street has has there been anyone that like recognize you from Luke Cage because Luke Cage is so big. I've been like, whoa, Mark Bailey, what up? Like, has that ever happened? There's, you know, the between the first season and the second season, I think my character grew a little bit more, which is really oh, totally. cool that they were able to to you know include me that way. Um, and so from the first season, I kind of get the wait, why do I recognize you? Look from people, um, and it was really cool because I went to an event in D.C. that was a premiere of the second season, and so there's some real hardcore fans there. And that was really one of the places that I, I was recognized from season one for the first time, where where somebody uh, was coming out of the men's room and he was coming in and he did a double take. And then I saw him go over to his wife and he's like, do you know who that is? And I was like, this is the neatest thing ever. <laughs> and um, and then when we walked into the second season premiere, um, you know, a lot of people, uh, the critics and everything had gotten a chance to watch the show prior to that. So they knew who I was from the second season. And it was neat. Like a few people, well, there was, there was some people who knew who I was and they said, come over, take pictures with me. And I was like, this is really, really cool. This is really awesome. Oh, absolutely. It's funny because we had Ryan Sands from Marvel, the universe, uh, Marvel, the runaways uh, on the show. And he was talking about, um, you know, everywhere he go, like when he goes somewhere, you know, there's always someone that uh, like recognizes him and says, whoa, you know, the runaways and everything. And we talked about the rules of like, because he's like, it's amazing, you know, and it's part of like my job to always be like there to take photos and talk to fans. It's like it, it's your duty almost, right? But we said it was like the one place where he he thought that was a little, you know, offside was if someone like came up to him in the urinal or the bathroom, <laughs> <laughs> which I thought really he's like, dude, anytime, just wait outside, I'll be there. But when I'm in the urine, when I'm in the washroom, that, that's a little different. Yeah, I mean, you know what's really funny is so I worked on um, The Post, uh, Steven Spielberg's The Post. That yes. I played Neil Sheehan, um, and I was on set for only a couple of days. It was awesome to be with, um, you know, that talented group of people as well. And I was getting a ride from a table read at Luke Cage to the um, to the set to do a makeup test. And the driver, I was like, "So what's it like working on this film with all these like iconic people? Meryl Streep, Tom Hanks, Steven Spielberg." He said, they're great. They're down to earth. He goes, I ran into Tom Hanks in the bathroom and, and I talked to him in the bathroom and I was like, oh, my gosh, that's really that's really cool. nice guy. Talk to you in the bathroom. And then this is no joke. I got there. I got out of the car. The, the people came over to walk me in. They said, do you need anything? I said, yeah, can I just, you know, hit the restroom real quick before we go do the test? And I walk in and no joke. Guess who's walking out? It's Tom Hanks. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Hanks. Within the first five minutes of being on set in the restroom, really quickly, oh, and man. I just let him go. But I, I, he was in full makeup, so I didn't have to do a double take. <laughs> but I was like, "That's really funny." It was really funny. Another question too: What do you, what do you think are some of the? I just find you know, social media um, is huge in terms of um, a lot of people are able to kind of go on Instagram, share what they're doing, share the events there are, share full boat, you know, Luke Cage, like on set, that type of thing. What do you think are some of the misconceptions, Justin, about the storytelling universe? And what I mean by that is, you know, a lot of people just, like you said, you know, you, you just told me a story about, you know, Tom Hanks in the bathroom, right? But Tom Hanks is a person, you know what I mean? He's a human being, like you and that type thing, right? So it's like, what are some of the, you know, the misconceptions do you, from your perspective, you know, people look and say, oh, my God, you know, you're Chad McPose, you're a god, you know what I mean? And then you just see him and he's just a cool guy and, you know, he was in Black Panther. But have you kind of noticed a little bit of, of things that people assume that are completely wrong? Like people just think that, you know, it's all glamour all the time and, you know, there, there's kind of those <laughs> – there, there's there's that middle ground too where you got to kind of work your way up type thing as well. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know if it's really misconceptions or anything, but like maybe if you pull back the curtain for a second, there's a lot of, you know, very talented people, very talented character actors and, and people that have been around for a long time honing their craft and doing what they, they got to do and sacrificing a lot, you know, in order to get a, an opportunity. 
And, um, and then when that opportunity finally comes, it's, you know, it's quite a privilege and you feel really lucky. And I, I think that that's the big thing is, is that behind all of that, that person that you see kind of start to take off, there's probably been seven, 12, 10 years worth of struggle to get them there, you know? Um, and, and I think because of that, they're a little more grounded and a little more human than people might think. And it's, it's just, Hey, I'm, I'm just happy to be here, you know? And that's, it's a, it's cool, man. It's that's, that's why I keep saying it's kind of a blessing. It's, it's pretty awesome. Absolutely. We'll wrap up. And first of all, Justin, thank you so much for taking the time to uh, come on the show and talk about, um, your journey thus far at Luke Cage season two. Now it's your, it's your uh, time now to plug away. Where can people watch um, Luke Cage, obviously Netflix, uh, a little bit more about what they can expect. Where can they follow you on social media? Stage is yours. Oh, okay. no, come find me at Justin Swain official on Instagram. I'm, I'm pretty active on Instagram. Um, the other sites, Twitter, Facebook, you can find me at J Swain official on Twitter. And I think Justin Swain official on, on my Facebook fan page, but I really interact with a lot of fans on Instagram. And if you come find me on Instagram at Justin Swain official, write me little notes. I write back. Um, it's, it's a lot of fun to be able to have that connection to people that are fans of the show and, and, um, be able to talk with you guys. So reach out to me, uh, uh, Justin Swain official on Instagram. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show and I wish you all the best, man. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It's a lot of fun. Let me yeah. know if you ever want me to come back. Oh, talk of course. Maybe we can even have you on with uh, K- Kevin L. Johnson because he's been on the show before. Are you kidding? I love him. He's yeah. amazing. He's I, been he on... come out in Ozark soon and, and he's incredible on that show. Uh, yeah. Shout out to Kevin. He's awesome. Uh, yeah, that'd be awesome. I'd love to be on the show with no, him. No, absolutely. Well, Awesome. Well, this has been Popternative, youtube.com slash Popternative for the um, video episodes of the podcast. Now, if you just want to listen to us and maybe not see us on camera, Spotify, iTunes, the audio versions are there anywhere you listen to the podcast. Until next time, this is Justin Swain and Petey Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Popternative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Popternative on YouTube. Be sure to like Popternative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter.